Hey everyone, Pastor Dale here with Calamo Church, and we are in the middle of our series, Chasing Carrots, attempting to reach those things that, you know, we'll never actually get to reach. Uh, let us open with a word of prayer. God, thank you for this time we get to spend together looking at your word and understanding your will for us. Please open our hearts in love and joy and wisdom to the words you are about to receive. Let it light our way today and all the days to come. In your name we pray. Amen. So, like I said, we're in this series called Chasing Carrots. And this series, uh, today, we're looking at approval. Um, you know, the, the kinds of questions of, will you please like me, accept me, affirm me? Now, how many of you might care a little too much about what others think? You know, think about it. I'm not going to ask you to raise your hand if you're watching this at home or like on the bus somewhere. But uh, if, if you are trying to think like, oh, uh, maybe I should be connecting with this so I can feel better, uh, me, Pastor Dale, uh, I might have a problem. Or you might have a problem. Either way, you might be saying, I'll raise my hand just so, just so I think he, uh, he knows. Um, according to Harriet Breaker, uh, the need to please, uh, or the... Disease, uh, sorry, according to Harriet Breaker, uh, approval is the disease to please. It's almost like a form of addiction. Drug addicts seek drugs. People pleasers seek approval. And there's three problems that people pleasers battle in their day in and day out. Uh, the first one is that you obsess about what others think. You know, and how does that how does that play out in our life? Well, how you need a new outfit, music, the right car, the right house, hair. Are you cool enough? Uh, are 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 we good? Like, are we are we okay? Like, have I said anything to upset you? Um, I I noticed I sent you a message, and you you were starting to type back. I could see the text bubbles, but the, ooh, those went away. Uh, you've been slow to respond. I, what have I done wrong? Um, yeah. Uh, I we obsess it would like we have a hard time realizing that maybe you know there's nothing wrong and it's just people aren't necessarily thinking about what you're doing every minute of every day. Uh, you're also overly sensitive to criticism. You know that supervisor makes a suggestion and it has one negative comment. It's it's difficult feedback and you just spiral. You just spiral. You're like oh I'm the worst employee to ever work in this job you know 100 people say something nice and then one person says something negative and you're like you know what that one person had to be right and who this one this one's rough for me you have a hard time saying no uh, you want to avoid conflict at all costs you don't want to hurt someone's feeling um, so, you know, when someone is out front of the supermarket selling wrapping paper, uh, you buy wrapping paper you won't use. Uh, those magazine subscriptions from kids down the road you won't read. Uh, you go to the party you're going to dread going to. You uh, go out with a person you kind of don't want to see again. You overcommit. Say that, yeah, of course I can help with that, even though you've got a million other things going on. Oh, sure, I'd be happy to. Uh, I've got nothing better to do. Ah, uh, but you, now you've overcommitted and now you're working like a full-time job and a million other things on the side. And yeah, that's, it's kind of what being a people pleaser is like. And I'm, I'm not saying any of this from personal experience. I certainly have never, never done that except all, all the times I've definitely done that. Um, <laughs> Proverbs 29, 25 says, Fear of man will prove to be a snare. And I want to call out when it says snare here, the word is mokash, which is like a hook in the nose for catching animals. Uh, also like a rope, like a noose to catch animals. Like it is, that is what that means by a snare. It's not like a little like 
comfy cage. It's like a hook through the nose. Uh, fear of man will prove to be a snare, but whoever trusts in the Lord is kept safe. So good news there. Whoever trusts in the Lord is kept safe. <sighs> and yeah, uh, I've I've definitely I've definitely done things to people please because I felt like I had to. And it's run me ragged at times. And if you're anything like me, you know what? You can be easily concerned with what people think about you. I I get it. But you got to remember, fearing what people think is a trap, a snare. And it's not necessarily just a relational problem. It can be a spiritual one. Becoming obsessed with what people think about you can be the fastest way to forget what God thinks about you. That's why we should have a different goal. Instead of living for the approval of people, something, by the way, that is impossible to obtain, you're, you're never going to win everyone's approval. There's always going to be someone who disapproves of what you're doing. You should want to live for God and God alone, for his will, for his glory, glory for his purposes. Uh, it was, in fact, the Apostle Paul who boldly declared in Galatians 1.10, Obviously, I'm not trying to win the approval of people, but of God. If pleasing people were my goal, I would not be Christ's servant. Um. Yeah, if pleasing people were my goal, I would not be Christ's servant. That's powerful. That is crazy how much that uh, that can impact us. And I, it's just uh, so much, so powerful. So let's get real. Let's do some real talk. It's easy to talk about living for God. It's easy to say, I'm going to serve Jesus. I don't care if they like me or not. The truth is we are drawn to carrying what people think. So let's call it what it is. It's here. Here's two things we're going to call it. It's the facts about the disease to please. As much as we don't want to admit it, number one is that people pleasing is a form of idolatry more of a spiritual problem than a relational problem. It's idolatry. It is putting people ahead of God. I'm asking people to meet a need they cannot meet. I am putting that winning of approval in front of everything else God has for me. Uh, in fact, Jesus shows us this truth clearly in John 12, 42. So a bit of context, uh, Jesus had just performed a bunch of miracles but there were still Jewish leaders who refused to believe that Jesus was the Son of God, like he claimed. Uh, we read in the in the verse, but the but because of the Pharisees, they would not openly acknowledge their faith for fear that they would be put out of the synagogue, for they loved human praise more than praise from God. They their. Uh, they didn't acknowledge their faith because they didn't want to be put out of the synagogue. Again, for they loved human praise more than praise from God. Have you ever been there? I know I have. I know I've laughed at something I probably shouldn't have because everyone else was laughing. I, I compromised my values, did something to impress, lied to save face, uh, overcommitted to prove my commitment to others, uh, let someone's opinion of me stop from doing something that would have brought me great joy. I, I hid my faith or didn't share my faith. I've done a lot of things to please other people. And it's a hard truth, but it's true. People pleasing is a form of idolatry. And if I were to probably identify the biggest idol in my life, it would be trying to win the approval of others. Now, the second fact about the disease to please is good news, and that is the approval of God sets us free from this disease to please. I love the way Paul said it in 1 Thessalonians 2, verses 4 and 6. On the contrary, 
we speak as those approved by God to be entrusted with the gospel. We are not trying to please people, but God who tests our heart. We were not looking for praise from people, not from you or anyone else. Think about how freeing this is. We can't please all people, no matter how hard we try. You please one group, another is disappointed. Uh, you get it right and you are good with both groups, but suddenly people change their mind. We can't please everyone, but, and here's, here's an, one we probably don't often realize, we can please God. Because of what Christ did for us, we are forgiven, we are changed. And I hope and I pray that you will accept this life-changing truth. If you are in Christ, God approves of you. God approves of you. God doesn't just love you. He accepts you. He likes you. He approves. Think about it. Your worth isn't based on what people think about you. Your, ba your worth is based on what God thinks about you. And you might ask, well, Pastor Dale, what, what does God think about me? What could God possibly be saying about me? Well, let me tell you. 2 Corinthians 5.17, you are a new creation in Christ. Ephesians 1.7, you are forgiven and your sins are washed away. Romans 8.37, you are more than a conqueror through Christ. Ephesians 2.10, you are God's masterpiece. Matthew 5.14, you are the light of this world. Romans 8.11, you are filled with the same spirit that raised Christ. Romans 8.17, you are a joint heir with Christ. 2 Corinthians 5.20, you are Christ's ambassador. 2 Corinthians 5.21, you are the righteousness of God in Christ. Romans 1.7, you are greatly loved by God. And that's just the start. Those are only a few verses about what God says about us and about who we are to God. Because we're a lot of things, but we are loved. And we may never be perfect for others. We might fail. We might not be their ideal. But what God says about you, he approves of you. He loves you. Embrace it. Hold on to it. Let it overcome you. You can't please everyone, but you can please God. And because of Christ, he approves of you. You are his. When you believe that truth, you can declare it. You can live it, but you have to believe it. You have to know it. And you have to be able to say it in your heart. Because I'm his, I won't obsess with what people think. Because I'm crucified with Christ, what other people think of me is not going to hurt my feelings. Because I belong to Christ, I will address problems. I will never fear conflict or go along with it because that's what is right. Because I'm accepted, I will say yes to what God wants me to do and no to the rest of it. Because I'm accepted, no one can steal my joy. No one can talk me out of my purpose. No one can stop me from doing God's will. Fear of man proves to be a snare, but whoever trusts in the Lord will be kept safe. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, thank you that we don't have to search for the approval of man. We thank you for your approval and we pray that you help us overcome the idolatry that comes from seeking the approval of others over your approval. We ask that you guide and direct us in these things. We ask that you give us wisdom for discernment. And we ask that we are able to believe that you love us, that you approve of us, and that you are with us, and that we don't need to seek that from others. It is in your name we pray. Amen. Have a great week.